Pastor Park, welcome to the USA. 감사합니다. Along with his interpreter, Joseph Park. Thank you very much. What an honor to have you. You are the equivalent in Korea of our Billy Graham in the USA. Billy Graham 같은 분입니다. 네, 감사합니다. Thank you. The first time I saw you on television, some time ago. 좀좀 됐는데요. 네. Yes. I was mesmerized by this guy with this beautiful hair. 이렇게 아름다운 머리를 가지신 목사님께 깜짝 놀랐습니다. And you were talking in your language with Joseph next to you, interpreting it. Yes, thank you so much. And I was amazed because they had a shot of the size of the crowd. 그리고 그 관중의 사진을 봤는데요, 깜짝 놀랐습니다. And I thought, what is it with this guy that he can? Bring a crowd that size and stand next to a guy. And what amazed me also was Joseph did your expressions. I mean, one time I was watching you, you went to, to, give, a, to give an example, and Joseph did the same thing. So it was, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's the kind of interpreter I'd like to have. He's doing exactly what you do. So it's such an honor to have yeah. you. The book that you have written caught my attention. Yeah. Pastor, how I became free from sin. Yeah. I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior in 1958, a long time ago. Yeah. And I've since then tried to figure out how to get free from sin. Yeah. Yes. But in reading your book, I understand exactly why the cover says this. Yes. Let me just give a little overview, if I can, Joseph about this unbelievable huge ministry in korea and it's actually worldwide correct yes yes worldwide and he's an evangelist based in seoul south korea he founded the good news mission a christian-based new religion movement movement he is also the representative advisor of international youth fellowship he was born again in middle school when the first missionary to korea Kay's glass visited south korea Kay's glass was with worldwide evangelistic crusade which was founded by ct stud Soon as I saw that name, I remember his famous quote was, only one life will soon be passed, only what's done for Christ will last. And to think your worldwide ministry, a result of his faithfulness to bring the gospel to Korea. What a beautiful picture. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Speak to us about your heart and why you compiled this book. I read it as I told the individuals in my room here. I read it through and then I go, I'm going to have to try this again. So I read it from the back to the front. Yes, thank you. It's an amazing structure that you have put together. Yeah. Speak to us what you do, how you have, with God's anointing, put together this huge ministry. Talk to us. 
예, 저는 그 1962년이 제게 큰 고비였는데. 아, 1962 was the turning point for me. 아, 제게 굉장히 많은 일들이 있었습니다. At that point, many things had happened to me. 하나님은 어느 거 하나도 하나님 밖에 있는 게 성공되게 하지 않았습니다. And God did not allow anything outside of God for me to be successful in. 네, 1951년도에 어머니가 세상을 떠났어요. 한달 뒤에 형님이 군대를 갔었고. 아버지는 전쟁 통에 집에 계실 수 없었어요. 갑자기 우리 집에 세 사람의 어른이 Suddenly, from my family, the three adults were gone. My oldest sister was 15. My other sister was 13. I was 8. My little brother was 4. We did not know what we were to eat and how we should live. And in the middle of the night, I would hear strange sounds and wake up. It would be just my oldest sister crying all by herself. And we would all wake up and just cry. And things were very difficult. We were very poor. And afterwards, my oldest brother was discharged from the army, and my father came back home. And then up till 1962, I searched to see if I ever had any happiness. 1952, 53, 54, 55, 56, up till 1962, I had never once had happiness. One thing I do remember was, was my older sister's friend, she gave me a gift of little notebooks on Christmas Day. She said, Oksu, present, she said. I didn't know what present meant. I thought you called a notebook in English present. And I remember being excited, jumping around with that. Other than that, I had no memory of happiness. I was hungry. I became 15, 16 years old, and I attended church. But still, since I was hungry, I would steal wheat from other people's farms and eat the wheat. I would, I would cut off a bundle of wheat, start a fire, roast it with my friends, and rub the wheat, and blow off the shells, and eat the wheat. It was so tasty. And then I would say, I committed theft. I have so many sins. And I would steal apples from apple farms. I would dig up potatoes and steal them. I was fighting with sin every day. Oh God, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. And then in 1962, in May, I applied to go to the army. I applied for the army, and it was the kind of army where they let you go to night school. But at the time, my front tooth was a little bit chipped. And because of that, I was disqualified at the physical exam. And that brought me into very deep despair. Why other people can do it, but why am I always failing? I have too many sins. God has forsaken me. And that was what I thought. And then I started to read the Bible. The, the Korean language Bible is about 1,800 pages. And if you do nothing but read the Bible for one week, you could finish the whole Bible in one week. And many times I would take a week off and just read the Bible. But when I read the Bible about 30 times through, I could see the heart of God and the structure of the heart of God in the Bible. And I came to believe that my sins were forgiven by the blood of Jesus. And from then on, I started to change. I read the Bible every day. And around that time in Korea, there were about 500 U.S. missionaries in Korea. This was immediately after the Korean War. There were many missionaries. There were many missionaries. 
And many of the missionaries came together and they started a missionary school. And after I received the forgiveness of sins, inside of our church, the young people had gathered in my church, I told them, I received the forgiveness of sins. You have to receive the forgiveness of sins. That's what I told them. And the people agreed, yeah, that's right, I have so many sins, how could I get my sins forgiven? But then after about a month, the church began to look at me with a strange eye. And, and they would talk about me, hey, he's committed theft and he's saying his sins are forgiven and gone? That's nonsense. And at that time, I went to the missionary school and I learned spiritual life there. And these were people who had the gospel. And then the spiritual life became more and more organized in my heart. And then D.L. Moody or John Wesley or Oswald J. Smith, I began to read their writings. And those things deeply came upon my heart, and my spiritual life became very settled in my heart. And once I completed the missionary school, there was no one who was calling me to come to them. All the other students were being called, but I was the worst student among the missionary students. And I went to a village called Apkokdong. It was a village deep in the mountains, and it was a very poor village. And when I went there, all I brought with me was $2.50 and a little bit of rice. But I stayed there for nine months. And during the nine months, I was able to see how God was helping me, how God fed me. I never had to beg anyone. And yes, I did go through some hunger, but, but after the nine months, I was brought to a small church in the countryside and at that church they had two members only, two Sunday school students. And I served at that church for a year and a half. And during that time more than 40 people got saved and were added into the church. And I was so happy preaching the gospel. And then after that year and a half, I entered the military and I was at the communications training base and it was a place where you study the Morris code and so I'm pretty good at the Morris code <laughs> and while I was there at that base there was no chaplain and instead I worked there as the chaplain and I was just a private and when the underclassmen would come in, I would gather the Christians, and on Sundays I would preach the word to them and lead the service. And individually, how to receive the forgiveness of sins, I was able to teach them. And while I was there for 28 months, during that time, many soldiers in training came and left, came and left, and I was able to preach the gospel to them. And each time I did so, God worked amazingly. And after the 16-week training, I was supposed to be sent to another base, but because it's a training school, but at, that, but at that base, if I was no longer there, there was nobody to lead the service. I prayed to God. God, please allow me to stay at this base. And one day, from the headquarters office, they made an announcement. Oksu Park, come to the education headquarters. And so I ran in. Now, Oksu Park, reporting to you, sir. Oh, have a seat, they told me. I sat down. Private Park, before coming to the army, what line of work were you in? Oh, I was a church minister, sir. Oh, indeed, indeed. And that person, uh, he was a um, lieutenant. And he was in charge of our education. 
그분이 나한테 얘기했습니다. And he said to me. 난 오기 전에 군에 오기 전에 교회를 열심히 다녔는데. He says before coming to the army I used to be going to church. 난 타락을 했. But after coming to the army I corrupted. I started smoking and I started drinking. 어제 박이병이 설교하는 걸 보고 깜짝 놀랐어. But private park yesterday I saw you giving a sermon and I was shocked. And I could not sleep at night. 박이병 내가 뭘 도울 일이 없나. Private park is there anything I can help you with? 예 교육 장교님 우리가 예배를 교실을 하나 빌려주. Yes, Lieutenant. An officer, sir, please give us a classroom where we could have service. I asked him. From then on, we didn't have to have service in the cold outside. We could have service inside of a classroom. One time, the commander of the game, of commander of the base, came to our service, and we were shocked to see the commander. And because there's no church here, because there's no chaplain here, I was so sad. He said. He said, "Let's build a chapel." So together, we built a chapel on the base. And I worked for three years at that church. And then in '68, I was discharged from the army. As I was leaving my base, if this is the God who is with me, I could live even in the middle of Sahara Desert. I thought. Even in the South Pole, I could live. I thought. Really, God was helping me in every way. 부대에서 이제 제대를 하고 and then after being discharged from the army 김천이란 도시에 가서 복음 전하고 I began I wanted to preach the gospel at the city of Kimcheon 돈이 하나도 없었어요 but I had no money at all 어느 날 but one day 제가 이제 그 김천에 이제 방으로 들어갔다 오는 길인데 I was looking for a place in Kimcheon 거기 이제 어떤 외국 선교사 한 분이 왔어요 but I met a foreign missionary 그분도 한국말서 돈안 영어서 틀고. And he was not good at Korean. I was not good at English. 네, body language 바로 이야기를 했어요. And we were communicating through body language. 당신 어느 나라에서 왔냐? I asked him, what country are you from? 한국에서 왔다. He said he's from England. 이름은? And his name was John Anderson. 아 그러냐? I said really. 어디 가느냐고? I asked him, where are you going? 여행을 한다. He says I'm traveling. 전도 여행이냐고? Is it a mission travel? 아니라고. He said no. It's just traveling. And I was upset. I said, what kind of a missionary is not on a mission trip, but you're just traveling for fun? You're a corrupt missionary, I said to him. Go back to England, I said to him. But he was such a gentleman. He didn't say anything. He just listened to me say that. And then when we arrived in the city, and I was about to go home, I was switching into a different car. He followed me. And he said, "Could I spend the night at your house tonight?" He asked me. I said, "Sure, come on over." And so we went deep into the mountains. And it was very deep in the mountains. We didn't have running water, no well, so we drank from the creek. And the creek water was very clear. And I was fine with the creek water, but it gave him stomach ache. For four days, he had to lay down. I felt so bad. And we had a tough time. And he kept on going in and out of the bathroom. And after the four days, you know, he was going to leave. And I felt so bad to him. And then he said to me, he said to me, Mr. Park, there's something I want to tell you. I asked him, go ahead, what is it? He says, I've met many pastors and missionaries, but I've never met anyone who lives the way you do. I want to learn from you how to live like you. I laughed. Well, what's there to learn? He said, no. He said, allow me to live with you for one year, he asked me. And I said to him, there is a problem. You receive your mission funds from your home country. He said, yes. I said, nobody helps me whatsoever. I have lived by faith. And so at times I go through hunger. So if I'm going through hunger, and if you have leftover bread, you're probably going to give me that bread. Then when I run out of food, I'm going to be looking to your bread box. And I don't want that. I want to look to God. Then he said, then what should I do? I told him, even though you have plenty of bread, do not give it to me. And even though my bread is rotting, 
I will not give to you. Let, can we promise that to each other? He said, sure, let's do that. And I said, I'm going to be going to work in the city of Kimcheon and get a place for yourself there, I told him. And then about 10 days later, he came back to see me. He said, Mr. Park, I've been praying for Kim Chun and God gave me the money to get a house. And I thought, why does God does not answer the Korean person's prayer but answers the English man's prayer so well? And I knew that God had prepared that house for us. And there I began to work with Him. And we worked together for one year. And we held conferences. And then and then three years later, I got married, had a nice daughter, and then I moved to a city called Daegu. All I did was just preach the gospel at the time. And, but I wanted to establish churches that will nourish the people who got saved. But we had nothing at all. And I've never told people about my needs. And at times I would go through hunger. And at times we were poor, but, but truly God helped us. And there was one time when it was very difficult. It was when my wife was having my second child, who was a son. And her contractions began at 10 p.m. at night. But we had not had lunch, we had not had dinner. We had no money at all. And I didn't know what to do. So I prayed. If I call the brothers in the church, I felt that they might help me out. But I wanted to rely only on God. And I really hoped that God would help me. So, and it was deep into the night, and then early in the morning, and I knew for the first time, as my wife was having the contractions, there is the frequency of the contractions. It became more and more frequent, the contractions. Oh no, the baby's going to come out soon. What do I do? And what do I do if the baby comes out now? Oh Lord, please. And I was very tempted. If I just make a phone call to our church brothers, I felt the brothers might help me out. But I wanted to believe God. And then the sun began to rise in the morning. And then this one young lady, she had just started coming to my church. And she doesn't know where we live. But I don't know why, but that early morning, around 7 in the morning, she came over to our house. And she came to see my wife. And she saw my wife having contractions. And then that lady said to us, Pastor's wife, I worked at the gynecology at the Busan Irshin Hospital. And I have a midwife license. So wait a minute, okay? And she ran outside, and she brought back her bag. And so that sister came, and then one hour before, and then before, uh, before an hour was up, my son was born after that sister came. And look, this is how much God protects me. And in that way, God had led me every single way. And that sister saw we had nothing in the kitchen, so she went out and bought rice. And Korean people eat seaweed soup after they give birth, so she bought some seaweed, she bought some beef, and then around 10 a.m. that day, we got to have breakfast. And I was so thankful. And so when it came to relying on God, God was our perfect help. And as I've lived my life until now, this was how God led everything of my life. And as I read the Bible, the hardest thing for me was, even though many people, it's the same Bible that they're reading, people say that they are sinners. But when I read the Bible, one time I went to Ghana. 
제가 1900, 어, 2001년에 in 2001 그 IYF라는 만들었어요. We formed a youth organization called IYF. 현재 그때 그 IYF를 만들었는데 And at that time I formed the IYF. 아프리카 가나에 캠프가 제가 강사로 갔습니다. And I was invited to a camp in Ghana, Africa as the guest speaker. 그때 한 2,200명의 대학생들이 모였는데 About 2,200 college students came to the camp. 그래서 제가 캠프를 했습니다. And we held a camp. 근데 가나 대통령 명부에 축하 메시지를 And the first lady of the president of Ghana came to give the congratulatory message. 그런데 이제 그 대통령 명부인께서 메시지를 한 20분 and she gave about a 20-30 minute congratulatory message, the first lady. And usually people like first lady, they leave right away after the speech. But she stayed until the end of the program. And after it was done, the first lady came to me and she said, Pastor, the president is very sick right now. Could you pray for him? Oh, yeah. I said, sure, yes. And I went to the presidential palace. John Atta Mills, he was President John Atta Mills. And he was also born in 1944. He and I were the same age. And I brought with me two members of our choir, two sopranos, and they sang to him Ghanian songs. And the president was just leaning back in his chair because he was not well. And he sang along to the songs. And then the president spoke to me. He said, he says, my personal physician has been treating me. And my sickness is only getting worse and worse. And it's been such a long time now. When I woke up this morning, I feel like I'm not going to survive the next five days. You know, I'm the president, and it's okay that I'm dying, but I too have committed sin, and I have not received the forgiveness of sins. And that's what worries me, he said. So I said to him, Your Excellency, Your Excellency, how did you know that you're a sinner? He says, I've committed sin, so I'm a sinner, aren't I?